Hi there, and welcome to a beautiful sunny morning in Tokyo. I just arrived a few moments ago on a Japan Airlines flight in first class from Osaka, but I'm walking outside to fully, I mean to show you the full experience as it should be. Right now, I'm in Tokyo Haneda's International Airport, Terminal 1, which is JAL territory. Tokyo has two primary airports, their passenger traffic combined making them the third largest airport market on Earth after London and New York. Haneda is sought after for its proximity to the city center itself, just 20 to 30 minutes by transit or car. The airport really wasn't used for much other than domestic flights until things were shaken up in 2010 with the addition of Terminal 3 and a fourth runway. The airport has three terminals, and Terminal 1, where we are now, has two wings, north and south. For the most part, if you're flying north, you'll be in the north wing, and vice versa. Flying domestic in Japan is a very different animal from what you'd experience just about anywhere else, and a lot of that has to do with how domestic flights here are seen more like trains that fly than flights. That doesn't make sense yet, but I promise it will. First, let me introduce myself to anyone that's new to the channel. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this flight out of pocket, and as always, the price that I paid is in the description below. Japan Airlines had no knowledge that I'd be filming, and I didn't receive any compensation for doing so. Everything in this video is my personal opinion, based on my own unique experience. The rest, I'll let it speak for itself. Let's get started. By and large, all the cool kids in the know only arrive an hour or so before their flight. Over the course of my six domestic flights on four different carriers, I only had to visit a check-in counter once, and security never took more than five minutes. They have this crazy concept in which when a line gets long, they open up another lane. It's really groundbreaking stuff. When passing through security, if you need to take your shoes off, only some do, there will even be someone standing there to put a pair of slippers in front of you so you don't need to touch the floor. Now, when I said that all the flights are treated like trains, it's because nearly all flights are treated like shuttle services. It is a very normal practice to just rock up to the airport, no ticket in hand, and buy one once you get there. And that's what all of these boards are here for. They detail which flights have availability for purchase in each class of service. You'll also find that ticket pricing is refreshingly more or less standardized as well. Some airlines, like Starflyer, even have much cheaper fare classes available only for tourists. Today, I'm flying what JAL refers to as Class J. This is a product that sits in between first class and economy, and frankly, we're going to discover what it actually entails together, because it turns out, I really didn't know. There are premium passenger security facilities at each domestic airport in Japan. I know that the Sakura Lounge is their business class lounge, and I know that Class J is kind of like business class, right? So I went through that security, and my boarding pass scanned fine. When I got to the lounge desk, things were slightly different. The very kind desk agent was trying to figure out what was wrong with my boarding pass. After a few minutes, I realized, oh, there's nothing wrong with my boarding pass, there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not allowed in the lounge with a Class J ticket. I asked her if this was the case, and she smiled broadly and said yes. I'll give her credit for a very patient and endearing quote-unquote search to find the root cause of my problem, though. So there is a business class lounge here, but you can only access it with a Class J ticket if you're connecting onto an international business class ticket. Oh no, I'm losing you, aren't I? Here, look, Mount Fuji. Perhaps JAL could change the name to Class K, not to confuse the J with J Fair Business? Just a thought. Anywho, today after walking through this garden, we're going to be flying up to Sapporo, New Chitose Airport to be exact. This route between Haneda and Sapporo is the second busiest air route on Earth, second only to Seoul Gimpo to Jeju. On average, there are 55 to 65 flights between here and Chitose per day. 
Keep in mind, in addition to these are also another 25 or so flights from Tokyo Narita. All of those flights, many of them wide body, combined is basically the equivalent of a flight between these two cities every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day. The domestic terminals here are designed for maximum throughput. Japan Airlines is the second largest airline at Haneda, behind ANA. Last year, Haneda had 78.7 million passengers, a huge 55% rise over the year prior, making it the fifth busiest in the world last year. Our flight was departing at 11.20 with a boarding time of 11. Did I mention that we're flying on a sold out A350-900 with 369 seats? And here is our three-year-old bird now. So next thing about Class J that I didn't know, there's no priority boarding. If you don't have JAL or One World status, you'll board with everyone else depending on your row number. In my case, the dreaded last group five. In reality, I myself was boarding six minutes after things began, but I just prefer to have less people on board for filming. Oh well, working on that One World status. As we head down the jet bridge, let's take a look at today's flight stats. I was greeted as I stepped on board and found my way to my seat for the next 90 minutes or so, 17 kilo. Here's one thing that I did know about Class J. The seats are more or less premium economy style. On this A350, there are two rows of first class, with a total of 12 seats, followed by 12 rows of Class J, in a 2-4-2 configuration, with a total of 94 seats. While these seats very closely resemble premium economy on many airlines, they are in fact not quite as plush as JAL's own international premium economy. This domestic version is 18 and a half inches wide with 38 inches of pitch, whereas their international seats are 19 or 19 and a half wide with an industry leading 42 inches of pitch. Not a complaint, just an observation. I had the distinct pleasure of sitting next to the most obnoxious individual on the plane, literally screaming across the other side of the cabin continuously to keep up a conversation with his friend for the entire flight. It was one of those Oh me? Oh no, I'm Canadian today. Moments. The seats in most regards are comfortable and have a small storage compartment next to your hip as well as an assortment of pockets on the seat in front of you. My only real complaint about the seat is the depth of the space under the seat in front. You can see my backpack here. In just about all cases, in economy, that usually slides all the way under the seat in front. But this is as far as it would go due to the placement of, I guess, the life vests under the seat. So especially if you try to use the leg rest, it doesn't really leave you much room to physically fit your feet. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. We need more gradient wingtips in this world. We pushed back a shameful four minutes behind schedule, I'm kidding, and the safety video began. I don't think that it was lost on anyone on board that JAL's tragic collision that happened just some weeks before this flight was on this aircraft type, on this route, at this airport. I don't think I've ever noticed people collectively watching the safety video more intently. We got our wave goodbye and made our way to the runway. 
If you head down to the description, you'll find my next 5 videos to come out, as well as a link to my other Japan series videos. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full length videos every Thursday and Saturday. This pull up, beautiful takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next. In-flight entertainment on board is lacking on their domestic services. I know it's a short flight, but if you're gonna spend the money to install really nice seatback monitors, perhaps offer more than 10 movies? At least there was a good moving map, as well as free Wi-Fi on board. Oh, and we can't forget the really sharp in-flight cameras. After flying over some beautiful snowy mountains, the in-flight service began. Now, everything that I was wrong about so far in relation to what Class J was, I promise normally I do know what I'm talking about, so all of that stuff already, I can understand it. But I was honestly really surprised that there was no snack given, or at least available for purchase on this flight. On offer were a selection of poured drinks. I suppose the beef consomme could be a snack. I went with an iced green tea and focused my gaze out the window as we left Honshu behind and began our approach to Hokkaido. I'll let you enjoy the snowy landing. Airport stats are coming up.
So, do I like the product, despite it not being what I thought it would be? Yeah, I do, and I can understand why it does really well for JAL. It's not a boatload more money than economy, but relatively speaking, provides a lot more space. To be honest, the only thing that really does surprise me after flying it is that a a doesn't have a comparable product as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go do that routine where I pretend to finish my day, but in reality I have another flight to catch, so I'll let you go here. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe with notifications on, so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on a a in their premium class from, well, here, to Komatsu, on a classic 767. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.